And then we're happy to welcome Ekteam Research and CEO Anna sjöblom -Halen. Welcome, Anna. Thank you. So my name is Anna sjöblom -Halen. I am the CEO for Ekteam Research. The company is located in Bas uh, BioVenture Hub at AstraZeneca in Mundal, and it was uh, listed on Spotlight Stock Market last year. We are developing a new therapy for metastasizing urethroblader cancer. It all started with one of the founders having a patient with a primary tumor in the bladder. That was taken care of by standard techniques, but unfortunately the patient got the tumors back in, now in metastasis in the pelvic area and potentially also in the lung. He was in very bad shape and could not get any further treatment and was not expected to live many more months. On top of everything else, it was found that he had a parasitic infection, which he got treated for. Three months later, he came back feeling very well, and it was found that he had no traces of any cancer anymore. So they re-examined the samples that they had taken, and it was shown that he had had a very severe form of metastasizing urethral bladder cancer. And it's based on this finding and a lot of preclinical experiments that we now are developing a cancer therapy against metastasizing urethral bladder cancer. Short about bladder cancer is the fifth most common cancer in US and uh, Europe. Just in the US, the healthcare cost 2020 was 173 billion US dollars. The five-year survival for the metastatic patients is just 5%. And yearly, the number of deaths is 200,000 in bladder cancer. So clearly there is a large unmet need. So the existing therapy has very limited effects and is also associated with severe side effects in these patients, giving them very poor quality of life. And it's also associated with very frequent and long hospital visits, giving very high societal costs. And bladder cancer is actually the most expensive cancer to treat. Regarding treatments, when you treat metastatic urethral bladder cancer in Europe and US, the first you start with, if the patient is well enough, is platinum-based chemotherapy. And if that doesn't work, you move on to checkpoint inhibitors. And thirdly, if that doesn't work, antibody drug conjugates such as Patsev. And it's in here, third line, acting wants to enter. There are subgroups of patients, patients that cannot tolerate the platinum-based chemotherapy, and they may get checkpoint inhibitors directly if they are well enough. If that doesn't work, you move on to Padsev. There are also other subgroups of patients having specific mutations in their FGFR genes, and what they can get in the US is Balversa, which is an FGFR kinase inhibitor. So to sum up, Actin wants to enter as a third line treatment and after marketing and approval, we want to move up in the lines here with uh, post-marketing studies in that area. So how many cases are we talking about? In total, in the US and the la five largest European countries is 58,100 patients that undergo first, second and third line therapy. Out of those, Third line therapy is 8,100 patients. This number will increase by time, unfortunately, um, until 2030, it will increase by 22%. So looking into the market potential, so 2020, the same region, you see that the total market is 4.23 billion US dollars. Third line treatment is 616 million US dollars. So by 2030, giving the 22% uh, increase, you will see a market of the third line for 769 million US dollars. We are developing something which we call the MFA 370, which we believe to be a risk-reduced project. We had an uh, original finding in a patient, a lot of research gone into this in preclinical studies, and we've developed then something called the MFA 370. It's actually two different substances, substances that today is used within other indications, and now repositioned into the treatment of metastatic urethral bladder cancer. And fortunately, 
our clinical uh, trial has been approved by the uh, um, regulatory authorities in Sweden. So we're now in a clinical stage. I would look at the MFA 370s and the key advantages of them. Uh, we can see that it's an oral administration and as compared to established treatment uh, where it's an IV treatment, the patient needs to be in the hospital, we can give this treatment to the patient in their homes. Being a repositioning, there is a lot of information known. In this particular case, for these two substances, we have excellent safety profiles, which is good, of course, for the patients. Scientifically, the substances are well studied preclinically as well as clinically. So there is a wealth of knowledge that we can tap in on and use in our development. On top of this, we will see a reduced societal cost. And that is due to the fact that these patients taking MFA 370 can do this in their homes. They don't need to be in the hospital, which is nice for many reasons, but also financial reasons. And as you know, the treatment cost is really important here and now today, and it will be even more so going forward. So here is some preclinical data that we use to support our clinical trial application. It's a cell proliferation experiment uh, of urethro-bladder cancer cells. And to the far left, in gray, you see the control cells. And those number of cells has been put to 100%. Next is a small addition of one of the components, an NSAID, and nothing happens to the cell number. If you add the other component, an avamectin, nothing happens. But if you start to add those two components together, then you see a strong anti-proliferative effect. So the cells does not grow in number as before. And what is also very interesting is that you look in detail in microscope on these cells, they can, you can see that they have gotten a signal that they should die. And this is what we believe happened to the patient. It was not just that a tumor he had stopped growing, but they actually vanished. So what you have here is the plan for the clinical validation, a plan that we've co-developed with Link Medical Research, the CRO that we are using. It's actually composed of two different parts, a phase one part and phase two part. And this study was approved then by the Swedish MPA. Uh, the phase one part is a study of 10 patients and we look into something called safety and tolerability when using MFA 370. What we also want to do is to establish something called recommended phase 2 dose. And uh, this recommended phase 2 dose is the dose of MFA 370 we would like to use in the phase 2 part. The study will initiate now in June in Sweden. And the plan is also to get results just according to our timeline in the very end of this year. After that, Actin will decide on whether to proceed into phase two. And the phase two is then statistically designed to be able to verify whether MFA 370 can actually give clinical efficacy in these patients. So we are looking at anti-tumor effects. It will be initiated, uh, we think, in H1 2023. And the main result should be in the very end of 2024. We are now initiating this study in June here in Sweden and we are also preparing to get regulatory approvals in three additional European countries. So with regard to patent status, we have approved patent in Europe, US, Australia and Canada. The patent will lapse 2037 including five years patent extension, which you usually get. We have also looked into something called freedom to operate. And that is a way to look into whether the patent holds when you go into commercial use. When we look into a new potential IP, that will be based on the ongoing development. It could be regarding dosing regime. It could also be uh, regarding biomarkers. We are looking into biomarkers to see if we can stratify the patients to look, for example, for responders and non-responders. And it could be also possible regarding formulation. We are wanting to construct a tablet where we can have both substances in one 
uh, one tablet. And that tablet will be done due to the fact that we would like to maximize the two substances' chemical effects while in man, but also facilitate for the patients to take the correct amount. We see that we have data protection or registration, 11 years, which will give us a product protection until 2040. So on this slide you see Acton's management and board of directors. Uh, apart from myself, you see Austin Smith, which is our chief medical officer. He's specialized in oncology, has been doing a lot of oncology trials in different areas, primarily with CRO. He is, um, uh, <laughs> then we have our chief financial officer, Michael Owens. Uh, he's been working at listed companies for many years doing the financial reporting. And then we have the board of directors. It's headed by Hans Peter Ostler. He is a, a board executive and works, for example, in Alligator. And in the center, you have the three founders, senior physician Christer Edlund, who is the urologist who had the original patient case, Professor Emerita, Marie-Louise Ivarsson, and Associate Professor Peter Falk. And they together have a research laboratory at Östra Sjukhuset, where they've done the preclinical experiments. To the far right, you have Göran Gannedal, who is an industry professional, worked, uh, for example, at AstraZeneca for many years. He's now working at, as a chief medical officer at Oblique Therapeutics. We have Fredrik Andersson, he's a private investor and also entrepreneur. And then we have Anders Vaas, also an investor representing Geo Ventures. So we truly believe that MFA 370 is a risk-reduced project for developing this new therapy against metastasizing urethroblader cancer. We have strong positive results and also see that we will have an attractive product development going forward. Ecton's target market is substantial, as I mentioned previously. And unfortunately for the patients, the competition is limited. So there is a high profitability potential for investors as well as acquirers. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Well, for obvious reasons, you talked a lot about repurposed drugs here, and there seems to be an increasing interest in them. I was wondering if you could just tell us a bit about the main benefits of these types of drugs. Yes, it's true. Uh, it's really booming at the moment. Uh, so since 2015, the global market for repositioning drugs has actually increased by 1 billion US dollars per year. So it's huge. And also, if you look into uh, the repositioning as such, uh, to reposition uh, one, sub, uh, one entity, it's uh, only maybe 220 million US dollars as compared to 200 to 1 billion US dollars for a new chemical entity and also takes longer time you know, with the new chemical entities. And also when you look into the final approvals for markets, uh, in the number of reposition projects, 33% uh, of them are approved in the final end, while for new chemical entities it's just 5%. So uh, we think with the sustainability trend that is out there in the, in the world uh, and the will to use what's out there that MFA 370 has a bright future. And then finally, um, Ectin as a company, you're now heading into your first clinical study. What does this mean for you? It's very exciting, very, very exciting. We are very happy to finally be there. And uh, we are collaborating with Link Medical Research, as I mentioned, which is a full service CRO. Um, and we are prepared now for a while to, to uh, enter. And uh, we are initiating now in June in Sweden. And uh, so it's a lot of activity regarding starting up in Sweden. Um, but also we are uh, working on in parallel to get regulatory approval in three additional countries. So that's some work too. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming thank you. here. Thank you.